Hi, it's Karen here, and I'd like to introduce you to the newest Mystic Mountain or Mystic uh, Mountain brush category that we're going to be using. And this uh, beautiful painting is called Graceful Waterfall. And we're going to learn how to use the brushes in the Mystic Mountain brush category. We'll want to make sure that we have our papers, our mixer pad open. We're going to make sure that we have our layers and our color uh, panel open. And if you want to create a quick little um, custom palette, you can certainly do that. We're going to begin by creating an 8 by 11 at 150 ppi image. And we're going to start by filling the canvas with a phthalo blue. And um, I would advise you to go a little bit darker than what I did <laughs> in this painting. So take it a little bit darker in the, in the overall color, and I think you'll be a little happier with the results. So we're going to go ahead and fill that via the Fill option from the toolbox. And we're going to begin by selecting the 2-inch landscape brush, and we're going to bring that color right up to white and or simply pick the white from your uh, mixer pad. And beginning up at the very top, we're going to uh, make sure that your reset is set to 100%. Make a few little uh, brush strokes, crisscrossy brush, brush strokes. It doesn't really matter, just anything that uh, is suits you. And uh, fill in the top part of the painting. And this is where we're going to be creating some of that light coming through. Uh, onto the waterfall, the top of the waterfall. So this is going to create all that misty effect that we're after. Then we're going to pick up the either the 2-inch blender or the 2-inch landscape brush with the reset set to 0% uh, if you use the 2-inch landscape brush. And begin by just sweeping up, very similar to what we did in Mystic Mountains with the clouds, where we create that very ethereal look. So just start at the bottom and let that let the colors just kind of mix together until you have a nice uh, soft area, a nice cloud uh, or a nice uh, area of light uh, created there. And just continue to stroke in until you feel uh, you have what you like. And we're going to go down to the layers palette and we're going to add a new layer directly above the canvas layer. At that point, we're going to begin by selecting the Frosted Foliage Brush, and we're going to go with a nice dark color. I suggest something in the um, mountain, um, Mystic Mountain color, uh, very dark on the dark end, because we're going to be creating that sense of depth now. So these tree shapes that we're going to be creating will be the trees that will basically uh, fill in the back area of our of our painting. So you can start on the right hand side or the left hand side, but you want to create somewhat of a vignette effect to where those um, those the, that foliage is kind of moving around the image and around that area of light. So you just want to continue painting and make sure that you have your uh, color dark enough. As you get down towards the bottom, where less light would be radiating from the sunlight, then you're going to find that you'll probably want to go with a little bit darker color at that point. So we're just going to continue filling this in. And we're just going to take it basically down to towards the bottom to the midpoint and just continue to fill in that nice foliage. Going a little bit darker now towards the edges. Always a good idea to keep those edges a little bit darker knowing that as the sun shines as a light comes through the foliage, the foliage at the bottom of the forest floor will be a lot darker than it will up at the top. And this also helps to create that sense of, um, of depth in your painting. Light to dark and dark to light really helps to create um, a nice feeling there. 
So we have that basic uh, landscape uh, shape in, and we're going to go ahead and add a new layer directly above the canvas layer. And we're going to select the 2-inch landscape brush. We're going to go with a nice light color. Um, you can go almost white with this, but if you want to bring in a little bit of that blue or even sample that nice, nice light color from the, uh, the light area. And we're just going to go out and pull out a little bit, and this is a little bit on the, a little bit too dark. Uh, make sure that you have your reset set back up to 100% if you had used the brush as a blender before. And then just pull out from the side just to create that lip of the waterfall. And then we're just going to make a nice, easy brush stroke and let that let that paint just kind of fall down as if it were uh, falling uh, water, a nice waterfall effect. So just pull that those brush strokes directly down and just continue to fill in that area. And you'll notice that because we're working on layers here, we're able to give that effect of that water being in back of the foliage, which is what we want to do. We want to create that effect. So we want that waterfall to look like it's somewhat in the distance. We've taken the landscape brush now down to 0% uh, on the reset setting. And we're just going to go ahead and drag out and blend out those edges so we have a nice, soft, blended bottom of the waterfall. We want to keep this very misty looking. We've gone ahead and added a new layer, and we're using the Mountain Mist Brush to create that feeling of mist down at the bottom of the waterfall. So as the water is falling over, uh, if you've looked at a waterfall closely, you know that as the water hits the bottom, it, it, you create all this be beautiful um, misty effect. And we want to create that with the Mountain Mist Brush and look at the colors that we're using. We're using white and we're sampling some of the blue. So we, we kind of create a little bit of depth within even the mist in the water. So that's important. So go ahead and uh, do that. You can do that on the same layer. And you can see now that we've got that nice misty effect. We have selected both layers and control E to drop those layers or to collapse those layers. We've added a new layer now. And we're going to pick up the sparkle on the water brush. And with a nice. Um, light color, we're going to start to pull out the edge of the water and just to create something that we have, um, something that we can go with as we begin to develop the rest of the painting. And you'll notice that I'm varying the size of the, uh, of the brush as I go and it's just giving me an indication of where I want my water to be. And um, I continue to play and pull Remember how you can pull the color down from above to create that feeling of the reflection in the water. And again, very, very light touch. You do not need to uh, press heavily with this brush. Remember to use your brush calibration if you're not getting what I'm getting with any particular brush. So we've gone ahead and collapsed those layers now, and we again have added another layer above the canvas. And we're going to pick up the number five painting knife. And notice that we're going to be painting with grain. No, we're going to be painting with paint. <laughs> and uh, from painting with grain to simply paint. And I've selected a nice color here that you can use uh, from the Van Dyke Brown. You want to go a little bit darker. And we're just going to begin by pulling out. And you'll notice when I begin to paint that it does add that thick paint layer. And that you should expect. And we're just going to create that appearance of a little cliff or a rock formation coming 
uh, coming out from the side here and you'll notice that I'm going over right over some of that foliage and that's okay because we'll be going back into those areas to add additional foliage uh, to create um, you know more foliage in that area and to show overlapping foliage as well so right now we're just uh, working through and developing that cliff side and it's okay to put some nice firm pressure on that palette knife so you get some nice coverage with with your brush and then we're coming over to the other side and we're going to develop another little rocky uh, cliff area a little smaller little area kind of like a bank and we'll just form that and begin to brush in the shape of that little uh, little cliff or little um, water's edge again we'll pick up some different colors uh, remember that you can go a little bit darker on the underside of that little cliff less light will have penetrated into that area and it also gives us the opportunity to play up some lighter values as we continue to work into the painting And it's okay to experiment here, just kind of see what happens. Uh, you may want a taller cliff on this side. Uh, you may want an even shorter cliff. So, you know, a lot of it depends upon what appeals to you as you continue to work through this. Next, we'll want to pick up a lighter value to create some nice little highlights. I like working the, with the paint with grain option now with the thick paint and maybe picking up the window frost texture, which will continue to add some interesting uh, texture to your paint. If you want to um, build on that texture, then go ahead and add a new thick paint layer. And then of course you can just continue, you can add it from the layers palette as well. And you'll notice as I begin to paint there that that texture starts to really fill in and um, you know, I can really put some nice pressure on that and get some really fun uh, textures coming out on the cliff side there. This little cliff would be closer to us, so we want to make sure that we have that appearance of the cliff being closer to us so we can afford to play with lighter and some darker values to really push that waterfall back into the distance. So that would be the goal here. So just continue to use your Alt key to sample color and uh, continue to build up the, uh, the effect of uh, texture within that cliff. And then go over to the, the small bank and again sampling colors and you're just going to continue to kind of build into that area as well. This area you can afford to go a little bit darker in value because this area would also be a, even a little closer to us but maybe a little less in the light, more shadow so you can afford to uh, work with darker values on that side as well. Just continue to fill in until you you like what you see. And I've selected both of the layers and collapsed them. And selected both of the layers and collapsed them again. And again, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer. Again, I love working on layers because it gives us that opportunity to really play up the, the um, you know, giving lots of different areas of, uh, of uh, overlapping and um, creating that feeling uh, of distance. We're picking up the sparkle on the water brush here and we're going to just begin by pulling down some of that darker value into the water and watch your texture here. Um, make sure that you're working with the plain paper texture and you'll see that I go up and change that to the basic paper texture. It didn't stick, <laughs> so I'm going to go back in there and do that again. 
you'll notice that I'm getting quite a bit of texture within that brush and that isn't necessarily uh, I mean it, it looks okay but I would prefer that I had a softer uh, texture there and now I'm getting that by going back to that basic paper texture and I'm pulling that area you can see that I'll pull the the uh, dark value in creating a little bit of a shadow effect picking up that darker value and and pulling it in from the left but re re trying to retain that light area through the center so that would be important there always keep that pathway of light going through your painting We're going to pick up frosted foliage again and we'll start to play with some colors here and let's uh, you know consider that we're in the fall so let's pick up some nice autumn colors and begin by bringing in the look of foliage along the edge of the water and again notice that I'm sampling colors as I move closer to the edge those colors are going to get a little bit uh, darker in value. And that's what we want to see. And we'll just continue to build on that. Uh, over on the right hand side we can also start to build in more foliage and create another little area of land. And this is all following that lovely path of light going up to the waterfall. You'll notice I'm picking up different colors here and bringing them in and this is part of the fun and this is the area where you can certainly explore and have fun by just uh, playing up color now. Every level of color that you create creates a different perspective, gives you more depth in the painting Remember to keep your values a little bit darker towards the edges. And again, that feeling of light against dark and dark against light creates that feeling of distance in the painting. Always using my Alt key to pick up color. I'm just going to continue adding nice color choices here, bring in those nice fall colors, and again using the frosted foliage brush. Repeat the color here and there just to keep some nice color harmony going and continuity going. Again, those darker values at the sides help to create some nice depth. using my Alt key to pick up colors and transfer them into other parts of the painting. And just continue to work those edges. There's so much you can do towards the end of this where you can go on and create uh, you know, additional effects as well. So pretty much have to let 
your painting come together um, in stages and don't be afraid to go back into it to add additional detail towards the end. But right now you can just see that I'm working through some of the values lightening, darkening, always trying to create that dimension in the painting. We're picking up the two, uh, let's see, the, the uh, foliage and tree brush. We're going to select and make sure that paper is selected and the dab profile and we've picked up that frosted paper one more time and we're going in here just creating a little bit of texture along the edge uh, sort of to imply the look of maybe some rocks uh, or the the edge of um, the bank here and again color changes are important We'll go on and go to the, the script liner thick brush, and this, of course, is a um, thick paint brush, and we can use that with texture or not. Simply use it with paint with grain or uh, just simply paint, and we'll just create that maybe that look of uh, you know a bank coming along the edge here. sampling colors and creating light and dark values and just creating that look of a little bank going along the edge there. And that waterfall still receding into the background as we pick up the nice textures throughout the painting. pulling a little bit of shadow and movement into the water. Remembering that nice area of light, that pathway of light up to the waterfall. And this just creating a little bit of disturbed water, maybe a little water flowing over rocks. Do whatever you want here. It's kind of what I was doing, just playing a little bit. Went back to the sparkle on the water and I created a brush called Sparkle on the Waterfall. And if you open the advanced brush controls from the property bar and change the angle to 97%, you'll notice that the brush will have a more downward motion instead of a sideway motion. So it's a fun brush for creating uh, the look of waterfalls or even just creating a waterfall from. So you may want to play with that with that option and from your sparkle on the water create a sparkle on the waterfall brush. And you can see how I'm using it here to create the look of uh, water flowing over rocks. And it's fun to play with. It's always fun to create your own brushes with Painter as well. And some of our existing brushes um, are fun to create other brushes from too that we can continue to use in our, uh, in our creative uh, paintings. So you can see how I'm just using white here to just create that look of little, little waterfalls, little water running over rocks and you could draw in maybe or paint in some rocks here or make a nice big waterfall where you have that water flowing over right over right over the edge which would be fun as well maybe some mists along the edges would be fun to you know bring that mist from the waterfall all the way into this area as well and that would create a little you know some additional uh, atmosphere. We're back to the sparkle on the water and we're just going to play a little bit by creating and 
mixing up that water a little bit and disturbing it a bit. And just pulling the edges out a little bit for some shadows. Trying to retain that area of light. And continuing to work with uh, frosted foliage and picking up some colors and just bringing in some more foliage. Every layer you add, every layer you add here creates additional distance in that painting. Darker on the edges, lighter towards the top. and always sampling colors to give the most natural effect. And this is definitely starting to look like a fall scene now with our nice earthy colors. Nice gradation of color always light to dark, dark to light. Overlapping colors all creates that feeling of dimension and depth in the painting. Now this is a new brush called the Fan Soft, which you will be getting. And it's a nice little brush for, key, for painting little edges on trees. You can see how feathery and soft it is. Um, you can use it in various different ways and with various different colors from changing the color expression to uh, gradient and picking up colors and gradients which will give you a nice effect as well it gives you more of a change in values and colors Darker, lighter, darker, lighter. And you don't need to go overboard with this brush. Um, you can be very, very subdued with it and use it just to create that feeling of leaves and branches coming out from the waterfall. Vary your colors always. Pick up use sample colors, go lighter at the top to show where the sun might be or the light may be reflecting off of different uh, leaves. And we're just going to continue adding those fall colors and just creating the look of leaves, trees, foliage within our existing foliage. And again, use that Alt key. It's a real good option for sampling the colors around you as you're working and helping to create again that feeling of depth in your painting. This brush you can also apply um, paper texture to as well if you want to create a little bit uh, heavier texture to the to the brush dab. So you can experiment with that and have fun with it. Again, as we go down towards the bottom, a little bit darker values. The tops of the trees will go a little lighter where the where the light is really catching those areas. And now we're going to go back to the frosted foliage again using the Alt key. And we'll pick up colors and continue to build in all that wonderful foliage and trees.
we've got a nice color harmony going here between orange and blue, complementary colors, keeping our edges again a little darker. And that gives us the opportunity to really play up the highlights in certain areas as well. We're going to pick up the foliage and tree brush and we're going to pick up the uh, window frost texture and we're going to uh, enable it in the dab stencil area on the property bar and a little lighter color and we're going to begin by pulling out the shape of some tree trunks towards the bottom. Again, that wonderful ability to create the look of texture within the tree trunks by applying dab stencil to the brush. And we're just going to continue to build that texture in to the brush as we go up and out, darker on the right hand side where the light is a little bit darker, and just continue to build that nice look of tree trunks at the base. Here again, you can sample color, paying close attention to light and dark. Drop layers and add layers as you need them. And here we're going to use that same brush, the foliage and tree brush, to, to pull out the look of a fallen tree that's gone into the, the water. And we'll start with a lighter value and then run a darker value over the top. Probably getting pretty wet that tree trunk would be, so it can be a little bit darker in value and creates a nice contrast against the, the blue water. And again, you can go in and use your final details to create additional highlights, pull out tree trunks, highlight the water, blend, and just create that mystic look that we um, are becoming accustomed to when working with the mystic mountain brushes. evaluate our layers, look at our colors, go ahead and continue to sample colors, add texture, emphasize maybe the rocks and the edges of where the water hits the edge, create the look of some rocks in that area. And I always like to finish with the frosted foliage brush and again picking up some of those beautiful fall colors adding little color spots here and there repeating color on one side and the other and keeping a nice harmony of color going on you'll find that you may do a couple of these um, Every one you do will probably be a little different. Um, and this is the finished piece. Um, I think, like I said, I probably would have gone a little bit darker with the background. Uh, I think that would have set up the waterfall a little bit better and brought out the, uh, the water a little better. But still, it gives it a very um, ethereal look, that feeling that that, water is, that waterfall is in the distance. Um, taking my foliage and tree brush and just doing some final little additions of highlights along the water's edge, sparkle on the water. 
and just simple little things that can make a big difference um, in your final piece. So take the time um, to really look at your details, look at your values, and uh, have fun with this Mystic Mountain brush category in creating the graceful waterfall. Thank mm -hmm. you.